whenever you visit a hospital, stand at the billing counter and you will see that people who have insurance, the way they walk in, uh, get the best doctor, best treatment and walk out compared to the ones who don't have. You know, they're yeah. struggling to figure out how to make that payment. And then maybe yeah. because they can't afford, they don't go to good hospital, good doctors, they may actually die. So it's a question of life and death. It's a question of dignity. And yeah. for a cost of what? Less than a din dinner for no your family in a year? Yeah. Uh, for that, you want to compromise on your dignity and, and, and the question of life and death. Is that critical? You know? Tapan, thank you so much for joining for this conversation today. You are based in Pune and we're hearing like Pune is in complete lockdown. Um, it's tough time. We are all going through crisis. Uh, I want to understand from you, Tapan, what are some of the key learnings uh, which you are deriving, some of the critical learnings while we are experiencing this pandemic? So I think there are many learnings uh, here, Shraddha, not uh, one. I think it's huge and every day is a huge learning. First and foremost, uh, whenever a crisis happens, the biggest learning is how do you face it? You know? If it overwhelms you, uh, then it's very difficult. You know? Or does it excite you? you know? It is difficult and the, the, it is not something that is uh, easy. You know? Let's understand this. But my personal feeling in life is that if something overwhelms you, you know, however difficult it may be, it, it kind of uh, cripples you. So the biggest learning is when you see a crisis, always try to see how can you be enthusiastic about the crisis, you know, in spite yeah. of how difficult the crisis may be. How can you be, you know, super excited about the crisis in spite of how difficult it may be, you know. I think that is an attitude which we have to have. Otherwise, if you see, when have we seen such a prolonged crisis, you know, yeah. if you look at even if you had a, a cat event or floods happening or maybe an earthquake happening or whatever, but it is always very short duration. Yeah. For a prolonged, long time, if you're in a situation of crisis, this, I think uh, every individual in the world would be facing for the first time. You know? Yeah. So how do you manage that when you see a prolonged crisis happening, how is the individual, do you manage that is very, very critical. That is the first learning. The second learning was uh, as an insurance industry, I think I've always been pushing for uh, distillation. You know? And uh, I believe that uh, customer experience is very, very critical. And uh, we have to deliver high quality experience. I think I've spoken about it in the past also. Uh, the insurance industry, especially GI industry, general insurance industry is bleeding to death, you know, with a combined ratio yeah. of 118%, which means these guys are paying claims like through their nose. Huh? But if you ask a, a common person what is his or her view about the industry, they will say they don't pay claims. It's so, so ironic. Yeah. The so the basic reason why this happens is Sadha, because of the process of payment of claims, you know, which again yeah. is also right in its own way because the insurance industry tries to take care that fraudsters don't take money of the common person, while the common person feels that they treated me as a fraudster. That's a different story altogether. So we push distillation, make process very easier. If you are if you are an automobile customer, if you have a claim, you get on the car, clip pictures, upload, 10 minutes time, we transfer money to you. We made all that and we're super excited that no, we have done so much and no, this is going to change the industry. But it didn't change the industry. The uptake was very, very low. So I was very, I was thinking, like, what, what, what is that's going wrong? In fact, before the lockdown, actually I was in Singapore. I was trying to change the industry there. There also they told me 95% is paper. So I was seriously thinking, where am I missing? When COVID happened, overnight, the uptake was huge. You know, yeah. We should uh, close to um, uh, 30 lakh policies, settle close to 12 lakh claims, all digitally. You know? Overnight, the adoption happened. It was so amazing. So the second learning is, always be ready. Adoption will happen. If, if you have good, uh, if you've done something good, services are good, and you have got ease into the process, don't get disappointed. No, uh, adoption will happen. It takes time. It takes some circumstances. That was the second learning which happened. The third learning which again uh, happened was that if you look at the product mix, if you look at what was necessary for customer, you know, let's say if I look at uh, the pre-COVID area, everybody is betting money on uh, sharing economy, you know? uh, sharing yeah. room, sharing cars, you know, sharing uh, uh, whatever, you no know, restaurant space. Suddenly, one day, the entire, what was the hottest pick of you know, businesses disappears. You know? yeah. So uh, business models can change overnight. You know? So every business model changes, brings in some new business models. So how do you adopt? How do you, you know, bring to that? So I can go on and on, Shraddha. I think there's so many learnings that I would say in a crisis which comes through. You know, if you're open to it, it is amazing. Yeah. 
Tapan, I want to ask you about this Corona Covered Health Insurance uh, policy that you've launched. Tell us about that. What's Corona Covered? Okay, so I think the regulator has taken a very positive step, and they have come out with standardised no cover for uh, Corona. And I would say the general insurance industry and the health uh, insurance no industry actually um, um, stood up to it. See, the interesting part was nobody was ready to provide you reinsurance also. Because you do not know, no, how many uh, losses happen. This is not something we actually you can actually predict. No, based on some data, you try and predict how to price it and how. So when the later came out with uh, such guidelines, I think the um, uh, hats off to the general insurance industry and the health insurance industry. They took the challenge on and they came out with the products. No, and actually I'm proud of them. In these times of need, it is um, something which should uh, be made available to customers. Uh, yeah. But the but the but the point we should remember here is that no, uh, they don't have support from the reinsurance. It's all on the net. So in uh. a way, somewhere also I feel that, and this is what I'm proposing also from a government perspective also. No, when you have such kind of um, uh, things happening, an insurance industry ready to no take the first uh, step forward uh, to be able to serve customers. Somewhere at the back end, there should be a, a provision by the government or something. If things go out of control, they'll be also supporting that. No. Yeah. Then actually, it becomes much better. So this would be my suggestion, and because I think your channel is being viewed by so many people, and that's why I let me make a point here. From insurance industry perspective, yes, they have come out with the product, and they are also servicing the customer well, and you no, know, and they are ensuring that they are able to cover as many people as possible. But somewhere at the back end, they don't have any support from anybody, which I don't think is good in a situation like this. The people require such kind of cover. There should be a a back end support. No, from the government uh, is my uh, feel. you are an expert in this domain is that in a, in a country where we have automobiles insured and you know when you buy today an automobile you have a cover you have an insurance why are people in our country why don't we all have an insurance okay Th- this is very close to my heart right? like, i've been a hardcore insurer all my life and uh, by education i'm a scientist so uh, you get a scientist uh, and you ask him such questions you are calling for trouble is people ask so uh, <laughs> let me let me explain this because this is again a problem like the previous problem i told you know about this uh, combined issue and the public perception that was one i tried to solve this also trying to solve if i look at insurance products no not about my company i'm talking about any company look at the product they are amazing products yeah for the price that is available it's unbelievable like if you take an auto insurance in us it may cost you from somewhere from 12% to 25% of the value of your car in a year mm. here you pay something like 1.25% no or 1.5% Look at health insurance. You try and take a health insurance in uh, Europe or US. It may cost you thirteen, fourteen lakh rupees a year. No, if you take a good cover. Here, how much does it cost you? Fifteen thousand rupees a year. But look at at the price point, the kind of product that you are um, getting. No, yeah. it's, it's it's unbelievable, and the kind of protection it takes care of something goes wrong. No, let's look at um, COVID itself. Now, the expense of COVID, you are hearing it's touching eight lakh, somewhere ten lakh. No, but average also about one and a half, two lakh rupees of cover is there. which means that the servers of insurance company should be crashing for health insurance no because yeah and anybody can get it like no you cannot uh, predict who is going to get it who is not going to get it anybody can get it no but it is not happening in the month of april the retail health growth was minus 3% of the industry so the funny part is that for a product which is priced so well and has amazing benefits and insurance companies are paying and the evidence of it is the balance sheet of insurance companies people why are they not queuing to buy insurance i think that is no that is the question which has to be um, answered so i was thinking about it a lot and you know, over time also i was watching this you no know, then i realized that most countries not only in india to look at what is mandatory by law is what has highest penetration so in india if you look at automobile insurance it has the highest penetration it's mandatory to have a third party cover by law you no know? so if you look at uh, even then in private cars about 80 85% in two wheelers about 30 odd percent commercial vehicle about 65% even then not fully insured in a country like indonesia where it was not mandatory by law automobile insurance was about 15% cover no mm. you look at home insurance in us if you if you're in us i can bet 95% of people have a home insurance cover there no because of the uh, mandatory for the flood storm tempest cover same people who have home insurance in us when they come to india and they would get a home insurance one tenth of the cost they don't have a home insurance here no yeah. so so for, first and foremost insurance is critical is required and that's why a government partnership along insurance company is very critical and to give you an example uh, the prime minister um, health scheme no the national scheme you see how beautifully it is done no you have covered 40 crore people 
tenders happen, insurance companies participate, no? And state can also have the right to do their own uh, trust-based uh, model. And they're serving 40 crore people, no? So insurance and government have to work together to be able to provide a good benefit to um, the citizen of the country. That is the first. And individual, why don't we buy? Because if you look at the human brain, and this question I asked my psychiatrist friend, no, and that, that he answered this way back, and that's why it's, it's such a funny answer. The human brain is not wired to see risk. So let me again define. How <laughs> if you're wired to see risk, we are not moved from the caves. Uh. And the younger you are, the more you're not wired to see risk. And I can prove it to you also, Shraddha. If, if I take you back to much younger days than what you are now, the way you'd be driving your two-wheeler or four-wheeler at a speed to what you drive now, there would be at least um, 30, 40, yeah, 40 yeah, percent. Yeah. 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 And then, then if you come to my age, then it will be much, much lower. No? So what happened? Uh, did you change? No. That The younger you are, the more you don't see the risk. Mm. Now, as human brain, you're not wired to see risk. Even in front of you, you feel mujhe nahi wala, no? Let's say yeah, COVID yeah, yeah. also. Why is COVID happening and multiplying so fast? It's a simple thing. Wear masks, maintain social distancing, wash your hands. Nahi hoga, no? Phir bhi kyo hai? Belief is, it will not happen to me. me. Yeah. And that is why people don't buy insurance, Shraddha. But the solution for this is, since it's good, the government and insurance company partnership is a big thing. And that's why I always keep it to make it a point. Let me give you another example. Health has been done. The other one which I'm pushing very aggressively, but some shoots I'm seeing is parametric. See, floods happen. Economic yeah. loss, 30,000 crores. Insurance company pays what? 500 crores, 300 crores. That is all that's get covered. Who loses money? The common person, no, on the on the ground. Yeah. Why can't government and insurance company and solutions are there? Just add 100, 200 rupees to the house tax and you can have a good cover that something comes wrong, no, or goes wrong, then insurance companies pay to general account straight. So yeah. I think these kind of schemes have to come out more. And then I think the it's a huge benefit to society and to a common individual. Having said that, I would request everybody who's watching, you know, your show, please be covered. At least have four insurance for yourself individually. Uh, first is a good health cover. It's very, very critical. It, it will help you lead a life of dignity. It's so critical. Second is buy a cyber cover. People are losing money uh, because of phishing and no malware and, and what's yeah. happening on the payment bank. Please have a good cyber cover, retail cyber cover. Third, have a good personal accident cover. You'll be surprised to know for a 1 lakh personal accident cover, death only, premiums 45 rupees a year. Can you beat that? <laughs> wow. It is not about mm. how much it costs, no? And finally, have your home covered. You spend so much time. I think you spend nearly 70-80% of what you earn building your home and putting stuff in that. And one incident can destroy it completely, no? About 15-20 years of your labor. So have that covered. So uh, earnest request, no, as a hardcore insurer, I've seen so many claims and so many, you know, things happening. This every individual should have at least this much. Thank you, my God. You're saying it so amazingly and earnestly that I hope we all go and get and have a cover. Yeah, it's so important. You know, Tapan, now that you're saying this, I was just speaking to my driver today, right? Like he, his daughter was unwell and then he took it to, it took uh, her to one very big hospital here. And he, the bill came to around 90,000 rupees. And he said that I'm so happy that out of pocket, I had to pay 12,000, but then the cover you know, it's like practically happening and he was so grateful that he had got the insurance. Yeah. No, Shraddha yeah. is a question of life and death. I mean, prove it. And if you want to actually see, and you're such a high profile journalist, do this once. If whenever you visit a hospital, don't go right now, but things are bad. But whenever you visit a hospital, stand at the billing counter and you will see that people who have insurance, the way they walk in, uh, get the best doctor, best treatment and walk out compared to the ones who don't have. You know, they're yeah. struggling to figure out how to make that payment. And then maybe yeah. because they can't afford, they don't go to good hospital, good doctors, they may actually die. So it's a question of life and death. It's a question of dignity. And yeah. for a cost of what? Less than a din dinner for no your family in a year. Yeah. Uh, for that, you want to compromise on your dignity and, and, and the question of life and death. Is that critical? You know, if I may simply yeah. As your driver said, if you didn't have insurance, you would not have taken her to that kind of hospital. No? Yeah. Maybe yeah. you avoided it, we wouldn't afford it. And that yeah. could have led to no more complication than no are getting treated. No. That is, yeah. that's, that's as, as important as that. Do you have data to show that because of the pandemic, unfortunate that it is, that people are getting more aware about health insurance? And then have you seen a surge? So as I said, April, I saw a negative growth. But May and June, I see it picking up. No? Uh, growth is um, uh, moving up uh, by about 100% uh, or so in terms of uh, the way uh, people are looking at it. But 100% growth also in a small base 
is it good enough is the question that i have no can we confidently say 100% uh, of indians are covered see people below poverty line covered with government no 40 crores as it is already covered the one working are covered by the gmc no the, uh, the corporates are covering it what about the retail uh, traders uh, what about individual yeah. business uh, people no and the government also make it mandatory now for smes to have it have a gmc cover for the people no the problem is that why why if you are not covered today i would say just go and buy it matlab no why even hesitate what are the yeah. options that you have you can't afford like 5 10000 rupees for, for yourself and your family you know to take care if something goes wrong and you guys can get good treatment or what is holding you back so though i see an uptake happening but uh, not to the level where it should happen compared to what the crisis is and the way things are going i think i i still feel it should actually be much uh, much higher than what it is today tapan from your lens what do you think makes this company you know your company your uh, uh, this firm stand out because it has created a very credible name for itself uh, there are two three things rather from day zero that we have been focused upon as i said since i'm founding employee so now i can tell you all the stories of the company i know every story of it i've been part of most of it one was that we shall be a claim paying company so we are very clear we said that no our product is claims it is not uh, policy now if we service our people well if we service our customers well and we genuinely do it with a good heart business will happen so mm-hmm. our obsession to pay claims you know actually has been good and that culture has got built in very well and that is one mm-hmm. culture which bajaj insurance company has that that is there. the second part is and if you look at our tagline says caringly yours second i said when things go wrong only then no people come to us at that time we can't be like um, cut and dry our empathy has to be at the highest order no we yeah. should we should ensure and if we don't have an empathy at the highest order i don't think we are fit to be an insurer and that's why we made the tagline very clear that we should have that care and we should be don't doing whatever best we can do for our customers and our people also is, is both sides not only customers and the obsession is on our people side also we should do whatever best we can do for our people the third part is which i actually tell in all my um, speeches you know especially with people who join insurance industry i said if you have the habit of lying please don't join insurance um, industry because we don't sell tangible product we only sell promises what yeah. do we tell you you pay premium if things go wrong as per the contract for this you are covered we shall pay that is all no now let us say if if you are in the habit of lying how can we be a part of insurance industry now if you are if you are insurance industry you should be good at heart and you should be honest all time so it's a habit you can't like be honest at work and be dishonest at personal life it just can't happen want to be a good insurer pick this up so i think these are the foundation stones that we laid and i personally have been very very obsessed about it and i'm very happy to say that in the company this runs so that's why when you ask any individual or bajalians these things will come out clearly whenever you do a survey you know that this is what the company yeah. stands i'm very happy with this shraddha so rest is immaterial rest will happen no it, it, and you said a very important thing that how do you bring empathy and how do you have empathy in 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 the business that you are in and then you make sure that people have do you, do you know just for other businesses and just for other entrepreneurs and people at large in the business world if you can show and share with us one or two things which can drive empathy in the way we conduct ourselves and our businesses okay so i i have a view here so let me know uh, put it across the view here is that when i was young and a lot of young people also have the same view then the view was that i have to rule the world i have to own this <laughs> i have to buy this car i have to have this house i have to have this power no i have to that retire how, by this age <laughs> yeah yeah so those are the views that we we all have you know which is natural is perfectly fine but as i mature into my career and into my life uh, it changes then the views are what difference do i make to society what difference do i make to people you no know? how can i bring smiles to people uh, what can i do to make a difference to my country you no know? and it changes over time you know that is how it um, it happens that's a natural progression and it happens yeah. for most people now imagine that if in the beginning i set up a business with the views that come later in my life how successful i would be you know i'd be very very clear and focused on the very beginning now for me i think the empathy factor came in in a very simple way i remember i was um, working in um, an insurance company and uh, there are some claim checks um, uh, pending and i used to be always obsessed if you have settled the claim the customer should get the money very fast it's not digital yeah. era of today no those that was a different era uh, when fax was like a big innovation i am talking that mm-hmm. era so we had this physical claim checks and i told my um, uh, claim said why have this checks not gone uh, he said uh, so the sales person was to deliver is, is not come as yet the office was closing so i told him okay um, i am on the way which which uh, which place is this 
He said the widow of a truck driver and no, he died and this is her claim. So I asked what's the address. He said this this place. I said okay, I'll I'll drop by you know. And obviously I left office and a couple of my colleagues would would join me in the car. You no, know? we had carpool not because uh, it was a luxury, it was a necessity. Yeah, because we couldn't afford so much, so we just go together. <laughs> so so then we went and on the way we thought we drop the check and we went into the house of the widow and. And we gave the check to her, and she had such tears of um, gratitude. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I realized that day that it is not business that I'm in. Uh, I get paid to do good, and I better do it, but no, in in a proper manner. I think that to me was a very big turning point of my life. So, uh, like you said, empathy or something. No, a lot of times happens when you are sensitive, and the switch happens. No, uh, when you're younger, I think you you have a different view. Uh, but having uh, walked uh, uh, this path uh, for quite some time, uh, I realized that when you have clear direction in terms of what purpose drives you, and if your empathy and sensitivity towards people know uh, around you, uh, the business does good. So let yeah. me uh, let me again give you an example which will more clarify. I was the president of the Indo-German Chambers, so the, those times to lead the trade delegation to Germany, and people would talk about demographic dividend. No? And I used to be surprised. Uh, why are they talking about demographic dividend? And Germany was negative, and India has a lot of potential. And those were the early shining India days. And I would be thinking, okay, good. Uh, they're talking about dividend, but if people in India don't get jobs, it will become a negative dividend. You no, know, it can lead yeah. to social unrest. Yeah. I said it's easy to criticize, uh, um, uh, be it the government or anybody. What as an individual, as a professional, can I do? Then I said, okay, let's make a mission for ourselves. We'll provide employment to one million people. I came and told me, we will provide employment. I said, how can we do so? I said, why can't we do? Insurance industry provides the maximum employment. No, on a variable basis, on a fixed basis. And so many people are doing good. Let's think about it. And that's how we created virtual offices. So we plan to open, let's say, 10,000 offices. And 10,000 offices have 100 agents. We'll create 1 million um, jobs. And in India, where you have 10,000 towns, you don't have to go to villages to open 10,000 offices. No? And you'll happy to yeah. know we already opened about 2,000 offices. And now already in the path of it. So by the time I hang my boots, I've created a million jobs. No, wow. that is what. No, when, when the purpose is clear, Shraddha, yeah. and, and you are very focused on no, uh, how you deliver that uh, business happens good, and it sustains for a long time. No, and people get uh, also motivated. So that is my tip you know, from my personal experiences, how it happens and how it moves. My love, no, it is not something I was born with this. No, I was also the normal youngster. No, in college thinking of ruling the world. I wanted to also ask you about this thing that, you know, insurance and, I, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because like insurance agents come to, you know, and meet you in person. And generally yeah. it's a very offline transactional thing for all the, you know, filing and all might be online, but it's still a very yeah. offline uh, thing. Have you seen that change completely in this pandemic? Again, let me give my uh, view. It's a very different view. Uh, there was a World Economic Forum report uh, in the year 2000, I think, 14, 15. We said that uh, intermediaries will not exist. Huh. And I remember one of my interviews, I said in insurance intermediaries will um, exist. Huh. And people said, why everything will be digital? People will buy online. It's so easy, so convenient. I say, yeah, it is. Unfortunately, in insurance, what happens is, as I told earlier, people don't see the risk. But when somebody talks to them, they understand and they buy. Uh, so I, yeah. I always say, give me five minutes and I promise you'll buy insurance. No? Yeah. It's a conversational sale. Which means that even if you're very digital, you still have to have a conversation. Yeah. And a conversation is where you require intermediaries. You know? So the process becomes digital, but conversation still requires you know, that empathy, that uh, conversation to happen. And this is why insurance, typically when you see how many efforts have been made, online insurance all across the world. You know? Some yeah, in auto, some, uh, some places where you have transactional happenings, those may be you know, moving uh, to online. But most of the other insurances are still very much offline because you have to have a conversation. I think the day somebody gets up in the world that today I'll buy insurance and I'm super excited about it, that day intermediaries will be over. <laughs> so. Do you think during this pandemic when the physical social distancing is a norm, how do you do you see some change in behavior? Some yeah, change so in what body? happens is the intermediaries are able to send out links to their customers. They will still have uh. conversations and purchase is happening. So online purchase has moved up, but not significantly. Today also, that's why I say the process has become digital. But still, we have to have intermediaries who are able yeah. to know, get the process Talk. moving on. No? Talk. Mm. So uh, the entire purchase has become no touch. But somebody is still having a conversation, no? be it on the phone yeah. or be it on a WhatsApp. That's how it's moving. How do you see the insurance industry Tapan, growing in India? Because we still, for the country that we are, the number of people that we are, still it's so 
it's like massively under penetrated <laughs> like yeah. so I, if you again as i mentioned to you uh, and this question came somewhere that if you look at uh, the to the gdp this 0.73 to no one lower than no i think china and every other place but what you forget is we're not counting number of lives that has got covered Uh, mm-hmm. if you look at like say crop insurance or we look at no uh, the prime minister yojanas no or you look at uh, the health scheme you are talking of 60 70 crores of people got covered no in the past just 4 to 5 years time no which is huge uh, population yeah. which is there but yes it is more from a partnership perspective which is happening on individual basis that challenge still remains no yeah and insurance company also in india still feels very less if i look at let's say singapore or uk where you have no like 500000 companies you're talking about like what 60 70 companies here So I personally believe that a lot more companies will come to India. India is a growing economy. India yeah. will grow. It has demographic dividend. So if you look at any world report, uh, people will bet on India. We may not be the fastest, but we are not also going to be the negative kind of no uh, environment. Yeah. So we will be there. We are happy, contented people, and we'll keep on growing. I think that is my <laughs> belief. So, so when you have a growth happening, insurance industry will uh, be there. No, uh, my only. Um, a uh, message through your channel would be i think more government partnerships have to happen and government is doing a good job having said that and we have to pick up more issue like no the pandemic issue which is there how do we create a pool for pandemic when it yeah. is next how do we create a pool for parametric or do a parametric cover which is available so those are the things that we have to start looking into more seriously because i think the wider people we are covering the more relief we are able to give to people things go wrong at initial basis insurance companies have to create uh, conversations they have to create distribution they have to reach out to every individual because i tell my people imagine that your friend falls ill and he doesn't have money to get treated and no he cannot get treated well and something goes wrong with him how guilty will you feel as an insurer that you could not cover him no i think yeah. if you have that kind of perspective then you will be obsessed to ensure that you are able to cover as many people as you can meet so the industry will go through an interesting time distillation i think industry is taken very well you have a lot of companies now able to give a lot of distill solutions very good uh policies also i think the way the regulator is approving policies you know and uh, the transformation happening in products also so it's interesting time shraddha but my bet is if you are youngster want to join any industry join insurance next 30 years 40 years it will be interesting so, like shraddha mentioned penetration is still so low that i don't see that no the industry not growing and not doing well as time progresses ab it did you there is such a proliferation of jobs na to abhi lagta hai insurance is okay but it is not cool and sexy and <laughs> there is this mindset right like to what do you have to say what do you have to tell to young people today of the country i, I like career? you as an interviewer you you ask very very good questions no and close to my heart. so let's talk of the insurance industry So I called my head HR uh, Vikram. I remember. So he was very happy that we have such high scores. We are the best place to work, great place to work. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, Vikram. And then uh, they did some survey in some um, uh, university which was teaching insurance. And 75% students said that we want to join Bayliyan. So he was super excited. He came to see you now the kind of branding <laughs> we have, and he want to join us. I said, okay, you go to um, any college, you uh, know, uh, any class minus insurance class. And ask how many want to join insurance industry. Forget about balance. No, how many hands would you see? <laughs> <laughs> He was a bit disappointed. And then I said, ask them if how many want to join Facebook or Google. Hmm. So he said, okay, a lot of hands will go up. But do people have any clue what Facebook, Google is, or what kind of work environment is there, and what work environment is balance? Do anybody? It is just the way people perceive. The point you mentioned. Yeah. That that is why people think like this. Somehow, insurance industry has not been uh, very focused on building their brand as an employer. Now let's look at insurance industry. Who all do you think work here? You'll be amazed to know. First and foremost, let's say for a health team, we have uh, doctors work, you know, uh, neurosurgeons, you know, on roles. Yeah, we have nurses working. For our agri business, we have agriculturists, you no know, experts working. For our engineering business, we have power plant experts. We have, let's say, you no, know, a, a, a pharma expert. And if you look at our actuaries, they are the oldest data scientists around. You no, know? then we have data scientists. Yeah. We have. Uh, a uh, 300 it guys you know uh, working we have was uh, al you know tapan have to say actuarial wo you so rightfully you said actuarial kya hai data scientist na they, they data science which is the coolest thing yeah, yeah. They're, they're the oldest data scientist i say no data yeah. scientist <laughs> data actually they existed much before that yeah yeah, so, yeah. so we also have data scientists you think of any degree that you have and i promise you in the insurance industry there would be a position for that any degree that you have. yeah yeah Uh, on top of it, we also have the MBAs, and we have all the BTECs, and no, everybody. It is such a huge uh, galaxy of stars, you know, that we have. 
because what you have to realize is that we insure everything from satellite to aeroplanes to every factory that you see to uh, ducks to pigs to crops so imagine as an insurer you talk to even any subject other than natural death because that is covered by my life uh, company as a general insurer i cover everything so i can talk to you about what crop to sow when i can talk to you about what can go wrong in pharma i can talk to you about what power plant to know comes through i can talk to you about the jets which are coming through what can go wrong i can talk about what boiler will explode you know that is the kind of wow. depth that that an insurer has and on top of it i meet like millions of people you yeah. know because as i said it's a conversational sale so yeah. every day i meet so many people and i go through so many subjects what are you looking for in life you are looking yeah. for diversity of learning you're looking for you no know, meeting people you're looking for purpose you're looking for you no know, whatever you look for in a career insurers provide that unfortunately yeah. the image of insurer is of an agent who comes to you to sell you push him back he comes again you push him back he comes again you no know, that is the image that gets created he is just a friend and guy who is doing his best to ensure that you are covered and taken care of at the yeah. back end you have a galaxy of stars no who are preparing all this together with you arogya sanjeevni policy it also covers the treatment cost of covid 19 you know if you can tell us about that this irdai has uh, allowed yeah. general and stand alone health insurers so, to offer arogya sanjeevni policy on a, on a group uh, basis also yeah ha. so actually uh, what happens so if you look at the the health policy which was which uh, people had the normal health policy also covered covid so let me make this point very clear no so if you have a good health policy uh, by any company covid is covered and the only thing okay. could be that you no know, uh, some people may cover ventilator charges some are not covering in the old policy that was before covid actually happened so if you have a good cover just check with the insurance company what all is covered covid is covered there no exclusion on covid so if you have a cover you it's there now the problem was not will not covered that is the id came specific covid covers to ensure we don't have any health policy at least by the covid policy you know so at least you're secure for this uh, particular uh, part of it and that's why the, uh, the regulators you know are coming out with changes and making convenient to sell it on uh, group basis to sell on individual basis so they the reach happens more and more and people have a good protection i think that is where the regulators are coming from uh, but the point is if you have a good health cover you would be covered for covid just check with your insurance uh, company what all does it cover and if there's some lacking that then look for a uh, covid cover on top of it. Otherwise, it's not required as such. Um, People with underlying uh, health issues or core uh, comorbidities can they get a COVID nineteen cover? Yeah, yeah, they can get. I think always declare truthfully to insurance company. See what happens is, and this is where the grievance comes in. If you are not declaring whatever you have and you take a cover, thinking Abhi, so I got a cover now, it will get paid. When a claim happens, insurance companies check all this from record. So people who have declared uh, clearly and have a cover, everything is paid. Only not declared, those claims get stuck, and that is where the grievance, you uh, know, starts moving up. So my humble mm-hmm. request is, please declare whatever you have. You will get a cover. I think on COVID, the issue is on uh, survival. If you have comorbidity, it is not about the expense of uh, treatment. It's the same for you no, know, whether you have that, you don't have that, and that is you know, how it is. So I will be surprised if companies don't uh, provide that. They would. They may put some loading on premium, or they may you know uh, look some underwriting uh, consideration, but uh, they would provide that. the data the understanding you have about people buying insurance would be i am assuming would be very high do you see adjacencies to the business of insurance that you can build you can think of on the data that we have no so one yeah. thing you to understand and, and this again is one of my grievances uh, with the regulator also so if i look at let's say if you are into banking business yeah, and you have data you can sell uh, mutual funds you can sell insurance uh, you can sell no uh, very press uh, under the blessings of the reserve bank of india have you ever seen an insurance company guy sell you a banking product uh, or sell you a mutual fund no never why do you think they duffers as per insurance <laughs> act 1938 an insurance company person an insurance company cannot sell anything other than insurance mm. so all the data you have you can only sell insurance that is as per insurance act 1938 now it's an unfair act no because yeah. for all other financial services they can sell on the data a holistic package to the customer and insurer can only sell insurance no i think uh, a lot of things are weighed against the insurer but those guys are still giving a good fight i would say but are you lobbying with the government to make sure that something's a change in this comes i i i am speaking about it first i have to speak to the regulator and then obviously the government also it should change no it's not fair yeah. like no 
everybody else can know um, yeah because uh, an insurance company is the best place to for me to buy a lot of health products exactly also, you know like nothing yeah. else yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we are not allowed, allowed to say anything else other than insurance at, as per the insurance act it's i think i'm very impressed with your question a lot of people don't get this no but you have always <laughs> ask you this question why can a banker sell all this why can't insurance company sell this then you come yeah. to something something is different yeah because banking can sell anything and everything now yeah. they're just with the building our top <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but here even with the business id you can't sell because it's an act issue so it has to go through the parliament what has money personally meant to you okay as i said different phases of life different things so when i was young it was like wow i don't know if, if <laughs> i have money i will like buy everything possible no and uh, i think about a year back uh, or no about two three years back uh, i wrote a blog uh, money kills so let me oh. explain this is interesting yeah. so i had gone to speak in i am shillong that called me as a guest speaker so i never prepare for any of my speeches i believe that it is not customer centric let me explain how so when you no, give me prepared, our conversation is also not prepared you exactly, gave yeah. the answers i'm asking yeah 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 because if you prepare then it's one sided no you are saying what you want to say other person may not want to hear what you want to say you should force it <laughs> right. down because you have a, a position and they have invited you which to me is very unfair so none of my speeches none of my conversations are prepared wow. so what i do is when i leave my uh, uh, like the place i'm sitting to the podium and the kids who are escorting me i ask them some question and then i frame on that basis what i would speak hmm. so that that day i asked them this question how much money uh, i said why did you join i am no they said um, it will get us a good job mm-hmm. so i said how do you define a good job uh, they were quiet i said does it mean that uh, the job which pays you good yeah but yes yes the job which pays good normal no any youngster yeah. Yeah. Said, yeah so i said that means that you're going to you join i am to make money no let's put it uh, uh, very simply like this simply. they said yes okay. maybe yes i said okay if the idea is to make money then in your mind there should be some amount of money that you make so much you will quit no see you're not looking at a job to have a purpose or to solve something or no create something you're looking at job to make money so fair enough there's nothing wrong with that so let's say you make whatever x amount then you'll quit because you've made the money and it's over the story is over with the job and the im degree that you have so they were a bit stumped and they said um, you have not thought about it like this i said okay what comes to your mind tell me any number they gave me a number and by the time i reached the podium and that day i gave a speech i said let's look at people who made more money than you ever imagined you know that you want to make you know and let's see what they did with that money so i said let's start with uh, some history emperor ashok was the most powerful uh, emperor that india had you know if you look at his empire right from afghanistan yeah. to but after his battle of kalinga the most fought battle that he wanted and he won that battle he gave up everything look at bill gates look at asim prem ji look at warren buffett they made more money than you can ever imagine yeah what they did with their wealth after they made the money they gave, they are either giving it all away or plan to give it all away no over yeah. time so money in limited quantity serves you money in huge is like fire it kills you be careful wow. yeah if you get more than what you require use it for society don't keep it to yourself it can be dangerous because if you want to understand this look at some of the maharajas and look at some of the emperors of india who did not uh, distribute their wealth or uh, look at some business people who don't distribute the wealth and after three four generations what happens to them and look at business people and individuals who distributed wealth what happens to them after a couple of generations they oh. get banned oh, so i think that is what money means to me it, it serves a purpose use it for the purpose don't hold 